Miles' textbook for midwives, picking up at page 19. Notes. Some mem the emotional response to the news of potential or confirmed pregnancy will vary depending on numerous factors, such as whether it is a planned event or following a lengthy period of infertility, and the mood may swing between excitement and anxiety. Some women may want to retain the knowledge privately as a self-protective instinct or to enable personal adjustment to the knowledge. Others may want to share the news far and wide immediately. LAS, so true, so unique. The numerous physiological and psychological changes which occur during pregnancy can sometimes provoke an unanticipated emotional reaction and the revival of past conflicts. If these have not been successfully resolved, they may color emotional progression throughout the childbearing process. Women who have had a stable and secure childhood, who have been allowed to traverse the stages toward adulthood with support, who have negotiated social and personal relationships, and who have achieved the cutting of the parental cord, may enter pregnancy in a very different way from those who have experienced growing up as a traumatic event fraught by unresolved crisis. But a supported pregnancy can be so healing. LAS. Page 20. Fortunately, not all women develop the unpleasant side effects of pregnancy, but for those who do, the opportunity to be listened to and to be taken seriously is important, as in some women these quote-unquote minor disorders last well into the second trimester or beyond. Some women can be sick their entire pregnancy. Page 20 also, uh, the, first can, the first scan can be a joyous experience and reassuring. Conversely, it may be a stressful event. Depending on a woman's past and current obstetric history, her expectations and the subsequent findings, the woman may be content to accept that her baby is an integral part of her own body and therefore hers. And the invasion of technology with its ability to show the baby to the mother may in fact be a dismembering experience. Katz Rothman, 1996, discusses this and comments that the use of technology in this way may result in removal of control from the mother. Pregnancy, though not an illness, does imply, question mark, dangers and risks to both the woman and her child. Dot, dot, dot. This view, whilst not held by all and subject to continual debate, may lead to tremendous stress on a woman faced with such decisions. It is vital that full and biased information is available to women and their partners in addition to adequate counseling and ongoing support. If a woman makes the informed decision to continue her pregnancy following diagnosis of an abnormality, then her view must be supported and any contrary opinions withheld. Refer to chapter 20 for full information on antenatal screening, chapter 7 for further discussion of risk in pregnancy. Because of technological advances um, aimed at determining levels of risk, women have to face numerous deci decisions during pregnancy and it has become a very stressful time, particularly in relation to screening choices for fetal abnormality. A study designed to evaluate the opinions of two groups, one health professionals, the other non-health professionals, related to women's choice and information in screening for Down syndrome found that both groups made value judgments about the role of the mother and the birth of an infant with a disability. The study consisted of the analysis of responses to a series of scenarios and was undertaken in the UK, Portugal, and Germany. Findings indicate an expectation within Western society that because of the availability of effective screening technologies, a positive result should lead to a termination of the pregnancy with the aim of eradication of individuals with the disorder. This view, whilst not held by all and subject to continual debate, may lead to tremendous stress on a woman faced with such decisions. It is vital that full and biased information is available to women and their partners in addition to adequate counseling and ongoing support. If a woman makes the informed decision to continue her pregnancy following diagnosis of an abnormality, then her view must be supported and any contrary opinions withheld. Dot, dot, dot. This may produce negative feelings, but as the pregnancy becomes more obvious outwardly, the woman may feel acceptable in that her new body shape epitomizes femininity. 
backing up. All these factors will affect self-image and self-esteem during pregnancy. Body image is another issue requiring psychological adjustment. Wait. All these factors? Pressure to abort her child to eliminate people with a condition will affect her self image and self-esteem body image is another issue requiring psychological adjustment initially the woman may appear to be gaining weight with no obvious explanation the basal metabolic rate is considerably depressed from early pregnancy this may produce negative feelings but as the pregnancy becomes more obvious outwardly the woman may feel acceptable in that her new body shape epitomizes femininity thus regaining a more positive body image any advice offered needs to be sensitive to the individual woman's needs and consider issues such as availability of resources, the pre-existing body, self-image, and idealism versus reality. For most women, the significance of first feeling fetal movement is exciting and may affirm the presence of the baby within. Others may feel out of control and that their bodies are being manipulated by this parasitic being. Even when a pregnancy has been planned, the reality of the way in which it appears to take over the body can be an alarming experience. As pregnancy advances, the woman finds herself subjected to a variety of procedures ranging from abdominal palpation to vaginal examination. Periodically, from late teens until old age, women in this society are expected to submit their genitalia and internal reproductive organs to scrutiny by a doctor. Martin, 1989, this invasion of personal space and privacy can be very distressing, particularly for women from cultural, LAS, or religious backgrounds where feminine privacy is fiercely protected. The required posture can be said to effectively separate the woman from her body, and many women talk of their bodies or body parts as separate from themselves, possibly enabling them to deal effectively with such assault, albeit by consent las coercion question mark expected norm medical pressure to conform to someone else's idea of what it should be basic protocol uh so so in holiness pentecostal circles uh modesty goes out the window um, at the doctor's office. That's something out of line. Many women will adapt appropriately to events during pregnancy, but for some it can become a period of increasing stress, which, if not managed effectively, may provoke deviation from psychological health equals spiritual need. The constant physiological changes experienced throughout pregnancy may bring an associated psychological response. Deviation from the physiologically normal does not necessarily lead to emotional imbalance. Many women will adapt appropriately to events during pregnancy, but for some it can become a period of increasing stress, which if not managed effectively may provoke Deviation from psychological health equals LAS spiritual need. Prayer is a way to manage stress. Labor. Inter, uh, interpretation of the definition of the onset of labor may differ between the obstetric terminology and the woman's perception. Pain for the woman may be profound, but she may still find herself informed that she is not in established labor. This may make the woman feel distressed or out of control. Empowering the woman during labor means enabling her to believe in herself and her ability to cope, utilizing her strength and determination. Immediately offering her a way out, such as with an epidural anesthetic, can for some women signify failure and despair. A small Swedish study examined the experience of the encounter with the midwife during labor and delivery from the woman's perspective. It demonstrated that for some women... To retain control, it was necessary for them to feel secure, safe, and that their relationship with the midwife was one of trust in which a rapport had been established based on empathy. This should also be the case with an apprenticeship that's worth anything. 
the one the women wanted guidance as opposed to dictation or direction they needed encouragement to listen to their own intuitive responses and they needed a sense of peace with periods of quietness permitting contemplation whilst a relatively small study based on a group of middle class women the qualitative nature of the research design lends validity to the conclusion that the key issue for the woman was to be seen as an individual to have a trusting relationship and to be supported and guided on one's own terms And above all, be assured of the presence of a midwife. Berg et al. 1992. Control during labor may also be affected by the environment. Hospitals for some women can be fearful and alien places in which they feel disempowered. Remaining within the home environment can be the equivalent for women of becoming your own boss. When they give birth at home, they own the whole shop and can be in charge of the entire enterprise. Martin, 1989. Such issues and feelings require discussion to alleviate potential sources of anxiety and facilitate retention of self-esteem wherever labor occurs. Cultural variations between individual needs should be acknowledged. How about religious variations between individual needs? Wilt's choice and greater flexibility are becoming more commonplace during the management of labor. It is important that particular religious, thank you, or cultural needs are met wherever possible. This, and it may only be possible in certain places this may re- like as carla hartley said the choice to birth at home is the choice to make all the choices this may require facilitation and adaptation by the midwife if valued rituals are not adhered to or las offensively disrespected if valued rituals are not adhered to some women may experience extreme distress and possible admonishment from their family and peers. One example of this in Jewish law, did it say admonishment? Experience extreme distress and possible admonishment? Admonishment, it did. From their family and peers. One example of this in Jewish law is that certain activities are forbidden during the Sabbath known as Shabbos or Shabbat. If cesarean section is required, the couple are not permitted to sign consent forms and the husband may seek advice from the rabbi. Got to have that one man. However, if undertaken uh, anti-Christ, however, if undertaken as a life-saving operation, Jewish law will not be broken. Waterhouse 1994, it is advisable that a woman with particular cultural or religious needs is encouraged to discuss these with midwives antenatally and that details of her request are clearly documented so that appropriate strategies may be developed. This principle also applies to any woman with physical or sensory disability. See page 11 for any special needs. Birth can be medical, sexual, empowering, belittling, spiritual, humiliating, joyous, painful, terrifying routine and i would add healing often it is all these things at once katz rothman 1996 each stage of labor brings its own challenges effective support and communication with full unbiased information are the basic ingredients for women to retain their sense of self and the degree of control they desire refer to chapters 22 and 23 for full discussion of the importance of psychological support during labor and chapters 21 22 and 24 for the physiological processes of labor. Lot of counseling and psychology references. So midwifery, counseling, psychology, and language. Writing, research. 
uh, postnatal period. Some women may need a period of time which they re-embody before being fully able to relate to their newborn and behave as required in their new role. Intermingled with such thoughts will be feelings of relief, joy, and a sense of achievement accompanied by the likely additional sensations of exhaustion and overwhelming tiredness. Caring for a totally dependent and demanding baby coming to terms with techniques for feeding and changing and the natural fears related to the health of the infant will produce stress. All of this is part of the normal process of adjustment occurring during the early puriparium and it is only when disruption occurs and the stress changes to the stress changes to distress that deviation from psychological health may occur. Several non-Western cultures allow women a defined period for recovery of between 20 and 40 days postpartum, during which they are often only cared for by other women of their family or village. This may include specific diets, certain taboos, or rituals, such as that of some Chinese women who may believe that bathing or showering during the first postnatal month can be detrimental to their subsequent health. Shot in Henley, 96. In the Western world, we have generally moved away from the lying-in period, owing to increased understanding of the importance of early mobility and promotion of self-care. Seems contradictory. Whilst health education is vital, this needs to be handled sensitively and with respect. With regard to certain issues, perhaps much could be learned from other cultural groups who still treat the new mother as special, you think? Early discharge from hospital may mean some women being expected to resume normal household duties in addition to caring for their in addition to caring for their babies. This is likely to exacerbate tiredness and create distress which may lead to psychological morbidity. The opportunity for adequate sleep coupled with good support are important factors for a normal transition to motherhood. Another valuable aid to healthy postnatal adjustment is the opportunity to discuss the birth experience. LAS, better in many cases to have a confidant who was not present or who is not the midwife. Uh, Where possible, this needs to be with the midwife or professional most closely involved in the care around the birth and occur within 48 hours. In addition to this, some units are now offering the opportunity to attend an interview up to a year or more after delivery in order to debrief and discuss unresolved anxieties. Charles, 1994, friend, 1996. I would say that ideally you would talk with it about the birth and debrief the birth with the woman at every postpartum visit and take notes and see and observe the process, how she's processing all of that. Uh, Some units are now offering the opportunity to attend an interview up to a year or more after delivery in order to debrief and discuss unresolved anxieties. That would be just a fascinating study um, to speak with um, either a wide range of women from various uh, birth uh, settings that that birthed in various settings or even and or even a, a specific targeted group. Uh... Were they, what were the sociologists who wrote Young Children, Sociologists, Young Children Learning? Where is that book? Lord, please help me find any and all of my books. God, thank you for books. Um, Okay, where were we? Long-term psychological... For further information on these issues and full discussion of deviation from normal postnatal psychological health, refer to Chapter 31. Okay, moving along to page 24. I'm actually picking up at the bottom of 23, the normal physiological alterations occurring during pregnancy may give additional problems to the woman who already suffers from constipation and urinary tract infections due to spinal injury. Immobility during pregnancy may increase the incidence of thrombotic complications such as deep vein thrombosis, which I thought is a more serious concern after cesarean. See chapter 15. Inappropriate preventative measures should be taken 
awareness of body language and simple adaptations to facilitate communication at eye level can assist greatly in the promotion of self-esteem. Backing up, it is helpful for the focus to be on the positive aspects of both the disability and the pregnancy and health professionals need to be aware of their own opinions related to disability. The most damaging barriers are the negative attitudes of other people, particularly among health professionals. Awareness of body language with simple adaptations to facilitate communication at eye level can assist greatly in the promotion of self-esteem, dot, dot, dot. Some women may have distinct fears related to genetic issues and potential risk of passing on a disease or hereditary condition to a baby. Anxiety may be present related to perceived attitudes within society as to the woman's suitability to become a mother, and she may fear that the child may be taken away from her on the grounds that it may be considered in the child's best interest. Advice regarding Acquiring available benefits should also be offered, and at all times the woman should be assured of the professional code of conduct concerning confidentiality, UKCC 1992. Advice regarding acquiring available benefits should also be offered, and at all times the woman should be assured or reassured of the professional code of conduct concerning confidentiality, UKCC 1992, dot, dot, dot. Labor and birth at home may well be the safest option, particularly where the home is adapted to meet the woman's individual mobility needs. A blind or partially sighted woman, for instance, would have many additional hurdles to overcome if admitted to a strange environment. When hospital is considered to be the most appropriate place for the delivery, orientation to the area is vital and also equipment may need to be adjusted or provided such as cots of suitable height. Choices should not necessarily be limited because the disability, for instance, laboring in water, may be a particularly appropriate option for women with mobility impairment. Dot, dot, dot. When control in in so many areas of her life may be limited and many may doubt her ability to be a mother... The disabled woman needs to be involved in all the decisions around the birth of her baby, which would be why, and again, home is the decision to make all the decisions. Carla Hartley. Women may be disabled by a medical condition or physically disabled, but healthy. The degree of incapacity should be individually determined by assessment of the level at which normal life is affected. Disabled people may find certain tasks difficult and may perform these more slowly than their able-bodied peers, but their independence is important to them. And health professionals should inquire as to any help required and not automatically take over from them. Additional, again, I I would think that that applies to a midwife in training. Their independence is important to them and health professionals should inquire as to any help required and not automatically take over from them. Additional equipment such as a flashing monitor to help a deaf woman know when her baby is crying may be required. Oh God, thank you for hearing. Thank you for sight. Thank you for all of the senses that you have given me. Page 25, while disability itself does not have a direct effect on environmental factors such as medical systems and professionals, it conditions the way in which medical systems and professionals respond to women. No sec, et al, 1995. Uh, Lesbian mothers by law in the UK, a single person of either sex may adopt, but not a same-sexed couple, although this view is currently being challenged. The adoptive mother, the relinquishing mother. Dot, dot, dot. As important as with a mother whose baby has been stillborn or died, that the opportunity is offered for the building of appropriate positive memories to facilitate the grief process. Some women may choose to see and hold the baby. Some even wish to care for the baby for an initial period. Whilst others may prefer not to have any contact with the baby whatsoever. Again, every woman, every creature is unique. Photographs of the baby should be taken and kept within the mother's case notes if she does not wish to have them at the time. Psychological adjustment to the loss in postnatal recovery will depend greatly upon the nature of the birth experience and the way in which the woman is treated during the puriparium. Dot, 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 dot. 
Remembering always that this will be the hardest decision these women will ever make in their lives. Um, to relinquish a child. Surrogate motherhood, dot, 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 frequently controversial, dot, 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 numerous ethical issues remain unresolved, and the government has rolled out legislation to control surrogacy agreements and clarify potential rights of prospective parents. Stephen Dorrell, or Durrell, who was health secretary in the last conservative government, has been quoted as stating that regardless of a birth mother's original intentions, she should have the full rights of any other mother. Murphy, 1997, dot, 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 dot. There may also be specific support groups in certain areas, other client groups, homeless women or travelers, um, other client groups over 40, see chapter 20, general health and fitness. Both groups of women have increased risk of certain chromosomal abnormalities such as Down syndrome, fetal growth retardation, and preterm labor. Both groups as in younger, under 16 or over 40. Recent media attention toward pregnant prisoners has highlighted another client group and advice is now available to assist the midwife to deal effectively with particular issues raised whilst maintaining the principle of the woman as the central focus of care, RCM 1996. In the future, the midwife may need to consider her potential role related to a single male or a homosexual couple adopting or parenting a child through surrogacy. Cultural concerns in a multicultural society, is import, it is important for the midwife to be familiar with differing cultural or religious needs of the local client population. Dot, 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 dot. Not assumed to be of low education or to have learning dis- it. Poor socioeconomic status accompanied by comprehension difficulties may lead women may lead to women failing to attend for antenatal, antenatal care. It is vital that health professionals develop strategies by which to encourage attendance and that the women are not assumed to be of low education or to have learning difficulties. Practices accepted as normal in Western society may be abhorrent to other cultural groups. Exposure of the woman's body, especially if to a male doctor, may be humiliating, and certain aspects of antenatal care or screening may induce fear and confusion if not fully understood. Women who are unfamiliar with Western attitudes and patterns of care may sometimes be surprised by the amount of energy and time devoted to clinical care and by the lack of attention paid to the more spiritual and emotional aspects of pregnancy. In many parts of the world, it is traditional for women to do everything they can to avoid stress and negative thoughts during pregnancy and to concentrate on positive images. Peace of mind is highly valued and thought to have beneficial effects on the baby. Shaw and Henley, 1996. And now we're learning the epigen epigenetic truth of that thinking which why okay well whilst this emphasis on the woman's psychological health is to be admired education may be necessary to ensure that it is not to the detriment of physical health or safety of the woman or her baby there is evidence of a higher rate of perinatal and infant mortality among certain cultural groups which why Page 28, uh, the key factor for all women, regardless of race, color, or creed, is equality of access, the right to information presented in a comprehensible format, and holistic, individualized care with the woman as the central focus. And wouldn't it be wonderful for midwifery education to be, to, to have the same standard, holistic, individualized care or instruction with the student midwife as the central focus and of course of course Jesus being the very center and central focus page 28 within the current climate of health service provision purchasers are purchasers are seeking to establish the needs of their local population 
It is vital that women have a point of contact in order to influence the purchase of the type of maternity service they desire. Dot, dot, dot. Proper lay representation is important on local groups, such as the Maternity Services Liaison Committees. See above in Chapter 47 and other relevant local forums. The Woman's Partner. Dot, dot, dot. It has already, no, it has already been acknowledged that a woman's partner may not always be a man. See above. But the purpose of this section is briefly to discuss the father of the baby as a secondary client of the midwife. Primary, really. LAS. The 1950s saw the introduction of the concept of mother-child bonding. The 1950s saw the introduction of the concept of mother-child bonding, and the father's role was restricted to that of supporter to enable the mother to to devote herself to the constant care of her child, Richardson, 1993. Contemporary society recognizes a more important role for the father, and some are now offered paternity leave but the responsibility for child rearing, LAS, early child rearing, still largely falls to the mother. Motherhood is accepted, and that's important. Early childhood rearing by the mother. Motherhood is accepted as a social concept. While fatherhood remains a secondary role, Timps in 1996, it is important, however, that the father is not overlooked and that he be included in decision-making throughout the childbearing process, provided that this is of the woman's choice. Dot, 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 dot. A man may be less likely to discuss his feelings openly and may have concerns over numerous issues, including perhaps the financial burden that a new baby can bring is with the woman if such issues are not resolved during the transition through pregnancy the man may also experience deviation from normal psychological health prayer it is now generally accepted expected that the father will be present at delivery whereas a relatively short time ago he was barred completely poor dad Some men may feel pressurized to attend, and it is important that they are given the opportunity opportunity to discuss any fears they may have concerning the birth. However, a Royal College of Midwives survey involving 441 men in 217 differing areas found that 88% did not feel forced to attend, and 98% actually chose to attend the birth. The woman may feel empowered by the support of her partner according to the nature of their relationship if a man feels inadequate observing his partner in pain or disempowered by the process and or the system he may become disturbed which could result in a negative effect upon the actual labor particularly if there is any dispute between the couple over the nature of pain relief hall 1995 something to talk about before labor and agree upon a balance is required permitting flexibility of choice for both partners if the midwife has been able to develop a positive relationship with the father preferably in advance of labor she may be able to help him to explore his feelings what effects does pain medication have on an infant i was told none whatsoever The hidden client from fetus to neonate. The hidden client from fetus to neonate? Dot, dot, dot. The presence of the fetus. The developing fetus within the woman could be said to be the hidden client of the midwife. Something is just not right with that. Whilst the woman is the central focus and her safety paramount, the entire purpose of midwifery care pivots around the presence of the fetus. Hmm. Dot, 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 dot. And the midwife could become involved in such ethical dilemmas. Disgust, care, who may... Oh. Oh. In legal terms, fetal rights remain a contentious issue, but the midwife may need to clarify her role in relation to prime responsibility and bear this in mind when involved in the care of a pregnant woman who may be a drug abuser or heavy smoker. Mayor, 1992. Discuss the potential compensation rights of a child born disabled Owing to a negligent act by the mother, such issues may become more prevalent in the future and the midwife could become involved in such ethical dilemmas.
Following delivery, ownership of the newborn may appear to be challenged, especially within the hospital where staff appear to give the baby to the mother and offer it for feeding. Words used around the time of birth can appear contradictory in that at the moment of separation, the very moment when one being pulls apart into two, it was not ever one being to begin with. The language that we use is that of bonding as if two separate things become one. The baby gets presented back to the mother so that she can form an attachment. Kath Katz, Rothman, 1996. This can be further compounded by the process, albeit necessary, of labeling, weighing, and wrapping the baby as a package to be then given to the mother. Women have usually formed a close relationship with their babies long before birth, and the neonate appears to recognize the sound of its mother's voice, indicating that it too has formed a unique attachment. Facilitation of total care of the baby by the mother rather than the midwives, ensures that the woman is empowered to provide a positive contribution to the infant's well-being. Page 29, uh, still the summary. The emphasis has been on the psychological aspects of the childbearing. This chapter has addressed some of the issues relating to the midwife's client group, primarily the woman but also those closely closely associated with the woman. The emphasis has been on the psychological aspects of the childbearing process and by referral to appropriate chapters for specific information and reflective analysis, it is hoped the midwife will develop a broad knowledge base to facilitate efficient, effective, and above all, safe practice, acting always in the best interest of her client. For every woman, pregnancy and birth are a unique experience. For some women, supported by family and friends, it will be a time of great happiness and fulfillment. Pregnancy will progress smoothly to the birth of a healthy and much welcomed baby. For others, this will not be the case. The pregnancy may not be planned. Complications may occur or social circumstances may be adverse. The birth itself may be complicated and the outcome different from the one anticipated or hoped for. Appropriate birth companion. Okay. Reader activities. Find out what resources are available locally to assist women whose first language is not English. You may decide to develop a proposal for action related to the provision of appropriate services such as written, useful phrases, or information packs on the more common cultural perspectives in your area. Two, develop an action plan to assist a couple to make choices, in particular related to the most appropriate birth companion. Pay attention to the needs of the partner as well as the woman and how the couple may be assisted to discuss potential outcomes of the partner's attendance or non-attendance. Christian Childbirth Companion Pay attention to the needs of the partner as well as the woman and how the couple may be assisted to discuss potential outcomes of the partner's attendance or non-attendance. Three, the following activities may be undertaken as a timed essay, used as revision notes or as a basis for discussion with a peer group. If you choose to write as a timed essay, allow one hour. A, reflect upon the terms motherhood, fatherhood, and parenthood. List the differing interpretations they may portray. Discuss how these terms are used within contemporary society and how different cultural groups may view them. B. Analyze potential communication barriers and how these may be overcome using appropriate examples. C. Explore whether stereotyping is common for certain groups of women and how it may be prevented.